Hello and welcome to Weapons of Math Instruction. In the last video, I showed you Archimedes' method for approximating pi, which is very slow. In this video, I'm going to show you a method that's very fast. I actually released this last year as the fourth video in our celebration for Pi Day 2021. And in the first segment of this video, you'll hear me refer to a sequence from the quote-unquote last video. That was from the third video from Pi Day 2021 called Inverse Trig Functions. I'll post a link in the description. Okay, here we go. In the first segment, I want to talk about sequences and convergence in general before getting to the sequence that we'll use to approximate pi. So I'll start by defining the natural numbers. The natural numbers are the elements of the set 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. I put this definition in here because some sources exclude the number 0 from the set of naturals, but we're going to want it there for our purposes. A sequence is a function from the natural numbers to the real numbers. Here's an example. It's the sequence that we used to approximate pi in the last video. Here, capital N is an element of the naturals. That's how this is read. And capital N is called the index of the sequence. And you can think of it as the independent variable of a function. And here are the first four values of the sequence that I calculated before giving up and running to my computer program for help. Now, I said that this sequence converges to pi without telling you what convergence means in precise terms. I'll remedy that now. We say that a sequence a sub n converges to a real number a if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals a. The limit is a concept from calculus. In fact, it's the first concept that a calculus student learns. In simple terms, what this statement says is, as n gets larger and larger, the values of the sequence approach the value that the sequence converges to. So, for example, pi sub n converges to pi. You saw pi sub n converging to pi as I plugged larger and larger values of n into my computer program. But as you also saw, it converges very slowly. In this segment, we'll look at the bailey borwein plouf formula for pi, which I'm going to call the BBP formula. It's a lightning-fast algorithm that gets us digits of pi very quickly. The BBP formula was developed in 1995 by David Bailey, Peter Borwein, and Simon Plouffe. And here's the formula, which I'll state without proof. It expresses pi as an infinite sum. The terms in the sum are a combination of fractions. Since we can't sum infinitely many terms, we'll cut the sum off at some number capital N. The larger N is, the more accurate the approximation will be. I'm not going to bother doing this by hand. I've written a C++ program that computes the BBP formula for a given value of N. Here the program asks for N, and here it computes the formula. Let's see how it performs. So here I'm going to run the program. Let's start with N equals 0, so that's one term in the sum. And we get 3.13333. That's actually a pretty good approximation. Remember the first approximation in the last video was pi equals 4. Let's try another term. So bump n up by 1. 3.14142. That's really good. Remember in the last approximation from the last video, even after using 101 terms, we didn't get 3.14. We were still stuck in 3.15 and change. Let's throw another term in there. We'll bump n up by one more. And whoa, that was quick. 3.14159. All these digits are correct. There's no point in me continuing because my computer won't display more digits, so I can't get a more accurate result. A more powerful computer could get even more digits than this, such as the supercomputers that have found the first 31 trillion digits of pi so far. What makes this formula so special is that it is a digit extraction algorithm for pi in hexadecimal. That means that it can be used to find any digit of pi in base 16 without computing the previous digits. Before this formula was discovered, it was thought that computing the nth digit of pi required the computation of the first n minus 1 digits, and this formula proved otherwise, and this is an absolutely astonishing result. The upshot of this is that the BBP formula is very fast, as you just saw. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this little bite of pie. Tune in for the next video. Hey, everybody. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, then please do follow me on my socials. You know you want to.